Hi folks, your Egyptian nerd here, and it's time to get spooky. Halloween is upon us, and so I thought we'd look at what we might call some of the spooky aspects of ancient Egypt. So obviously we have to start with curses. The idea of the Mummy's Curse has been with us for a long time and has inspired many books and movies, some of which are awful and some of which I will treasure forever. The most famous curse is the one supposedly released by the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. I've got bad news for you though, it's not real. According to the legend, an inscription was discovered that said that death shall come on swift wings to whoever opened the tomb, but no such text exists. Rumours of a curse began to circulate during the tomb's excavation, essentially because Lord Carnarvon, the excavation's financer, had sold the exclusive reporting rights for the excavation to the Times newspaper, so everybody else needed something to write about in order to capitalise on popular interest. But there are real ancient Egyptian curse texts. For example, this might take the form of a text by the entrance of a tomb that invites in people who are pure so that they can make offerings, but promises bad things to happen to impure people or people who might damage the tomb. On a related note, at various points in Egyptian history, but particularly in the Middle Kingdom, you get magical practices using what Egyptologists call execration texts. These are essentially lists of enemies, especially foreign peoples, that are written on vessels or on figurines, and then are ritually destroyed. The idea of which being that you're also destroying the real thing. Now this wasn't subversive or countercultural; it was a sanctioned practice, and it seems to have been particularly common at times and in places where tensions with foreigners were heightened. But what about ghosts? To the ancient Egyptians, the living, the dead, and the gods were, in a sense, different tiers of one big society. So the fact that the dead could interact with the living wasn't particularly surprising, but in fact it was desirable. If your rebirth had gone well, then as well as existing in the afterlife, you'd be able to come back and participate in the world of the living. And people encountered their dead ancestors in mortuary rituals and through certain festivals. But things didn't always run smoothly, as indicated by so-called letters to the dead. These were correspondences written on objects from papyrus to bowls, where people wrote to a dead person just as they would a living person, to ask them for help with something, or to try and appease them. In one New Kingdom example, a man asks his dead wife to leave him in peace, as he's obviously upset her somehow, and so she has lain her hand upon him. Finally, a word on monsters. The Egyptian universe is full of lots of different beings, with various forms, powers, and functions, so for us to call them monsters might be missing the point. Nonetheless, there are a number of ferocious or semi-divine beings in Egyptian mythology that might, to us, fit our category of monster. One of these is Apep, or Apophis, the great serpent that dwells in the underworld and attacks the sun god every night on his way through. The Book of the Dead contains scenes of Apep being killed by the sun god in the form of a cat, and it was so important to minimise the threat that Apep posed that the snake hieroglyph used to write his name is often drawn being sliced up by knives. Another being you should probably look out for is Amut, the Devourer. Amut is a fearsome goddess that's part crocodile, part lion, and part hippo, and she waits by the sidelines while your heart is being judged in the afterlife. Egyptians saw the heart as the seat of your being, and if you failed the test, it was swallowed by Amut, and you ceased to exist. That is the second and ultimate death. But you're all lovely, so there's nothing to worry about. That's all we've got time for. Have a happy Halloween, and I'll see you again next time. I'm your Egyptian nerd, and remember, there's always more to discover.